I spent 12 days in the hospital, a million gazillion tests, and went through a lot of stuff. And when they released me, I was in this pit of despair. I really, I couldn't even plan dinner. Then I, I saw this course. I saw this free course online. I think it was, I think it was on Facebook. And I was like, I've always wanted to try this. Maybe I should just go see if it's for me. Um, I couldn't do my soap business. I was gone because the world sh had shut down. And I didn't have like the energy or the physical strength to do what I had been doing. So really I lost a business. I lost my health and didn't have much to look forward to. So I grabbed onto podcasting and I discovered that I actually had a knack for it, that I really liked it. I enjoyed the people I was meeting. It took me out of this pity party, sorrow, nasty depression that I was in and gave me this, that little tiny sliver of hope. And I started to plan. How podcasting saved my life. That's going to be the subject. Well, not my life, Bree's life of today's chapter of the business library. She's had a new book out where she goes into a lot more detail about the different things that we speak about in this episode. So if you, any story you want to hear elaborated, feel free to check out the link. It's free on Kindle. I don't know how long that goes on. So definitely do check it out now. And also this episode is brought to you by the courses that both we and Brie have on The Great Discovery. There's going to be a link for our course on content marketing, getting started down there. And also how to get started with podcasting is also going to be down there. So if some of them is something you want, feel free to check them out, including all the other links down below. So first of all, Brie, to, to start this whole story off, how did you actually find podcasting? So it was a, it's a funny story because I left a class earlier today um, from a friend of mine named Kathy Heller, and it was really scrolling the internet and just, you know, hanging out. And I saw this free class on podcasting and I was, I was always intrigued and that kind of, it was the spark I needed at the time. And I thought, Hmm, you know, this is something that I could actually do that I could try, even though I have no background in it. I've never done anything like it before, but it did, that didn't scare me. I just wanted something that I could physically handle doing at the time. I was, I was recently diagnosed with some pretty extensive uh, medical issues and I, I was lost and I needed something. And that just happened to, upon me. And I decided, you know what, it's, it's going to be something I'm going to give it a try. So I attended a free class and I really, I was like overwhelmed and excited about it. I just, I thought, man, what an amazing platform way to share a message, connect with people and have this, this podcast that could really fill a void that I had in my life at the time. And so I jumped on it. I was all in. I wanted to learn everything I possibly could about podcasting. And here I am three years later, still podcasting and it's changed my life. It's saved my life in so many ways. And to see it all come full circle now, to see new people that were taking the class. I have almost a hundred people that have taken my class since I uploaded it uh, in April. And a lot has changed for me since I uploaded that class, but I'm, I'm just, there's so much more I want to do. And so I'm just very, very excited about it, as you can tell. <laughs> well, that's always good. Uh, you don't want boring monotone content. So when, I think the full circle moment was kind of able to, to somewhat extent came when you started to teach other people how to podcast. So when it, like, how could you go like more into detail about the situation? Was it yeah, three years ago with what was going on and, and the process that you kind of went through sure. to start podcasting? Yeah. So I had actually, I had another business that I had started in 2008, was very excited about it. I was in the middle of rebranding. I had just spent thousands of dollars on new labels, new logos, new website, I had like all of this stuff, right? I was so excited. And then I got COVID. I was really, really sick. 
and I had everything went on pause and I started to get better. It took a while, but I didn't end up in the hospital from that. I was lucky and I started to get better, but then I wasn't getting better and I actually was getting sicker and it took me cause I'm really stubborn and I'm like, I get, I'll just go, I'll just push through, I'll push through until I couldn't. And they had to take me to the emergency room and they diagnosed me with ooh, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Long two list. pulmonary, yeah, two pulmonary embolisms, such so as clots in, you know, in my lungs. I had a DVT, which is a clot in my leg. My heart had been enlarged, and they discovered that I had a a valve that was wrong that I've had since birth, um, that needed to be replaced, and I was in heart failure. So pretty heavy stuff, right? And I wasn't even sure I was going to make it. It was pretty bad, and. So I spent 12 days in the hospital, a million gazillion tests, and went through a lot of stuff. And when they released me, I was in this pit of despair. I really, like, I couldn't even plan dinner. I couldn't do a shopping list. Little mundane things that we take for granted. I couldn't plan my future. I couldn't move past this diagnosis and this fear and depression of, I might not have a tomorrow. And I sat that way for a couple of months, really just not knowing what was next for me. And it was a really not fun pity party that I had by myself that no one was invited to. And I just moped and, and cried most of the time. And then I, I saw this course. I saw this free course online. I think it was, I think it was on Facebook. And I was like, I've always wanted to try this. Maybe I should just go see if it's for me. Um, I couldn't do my soap business. I couldn't, all of the labels I had done, all of the rebranding I had done, all of that, it was gone because the world sh had shut down and I didn't have like the energy or the physical strength to do what I had been doing. So really I lost a business. I lost my health and didn't have much to look forward to. So I grabbed onto podcasting and I discovered that I actually had a knack for it, that I really liked it. I enjoyed the people I was meeting. It took me out of this pity party, sorrow, nasty depression that I was in and gave me this, that little tiny sliver of hope. And I started to plan. I started to say, all right, I'm going to go to class tomorrow. Where last time I'd said, I don't have a tomorrow. So here I was making plans, even if it was just for a day or two days or a week, I started to plan a future for myself. And I think, you know, we, we, we want our doctors to do all these things for us, but it really takes a part of ourselves to say, I am going to be here. I want to be here. I need to be here. And I'm going to fight like crazy to be here. And podcasting is what gave me that spark, that light that got me moving forward. And so I just jumped into it. I said, I'm starting a podcast. I'm going to make, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to figure that out as I go. I'm just going to do the thing. And I ended up buying a course. I took a course with two lovely, lovely people. Um, and I still, they are still my mentors. I still look to them for advice. And it got me really involved in the podcasting world. And so I just started helping people. I, I, I'm a teacher by trade. I have a degree in teaching. And so it was natural for me to want to support others. And so when they had questions and I had answers, I would help them. And I had skills and didn't realize how well they would blend in with podcasting. And so I just started co like coaching people, but not really officially coaching people. I guess it's kind of how it started. That was a long answer to a good question. <laughs> well, good right. answers. Well, it's an inspiring ahead, story. I mean, Moss had to carry the whole business for a couple of months. So I, I went through similar. I had pulmonary embolisms and DVT and cancer and all this crap. And um, yeah, he, he carried the whole thing. So he docked my pay for two months, but that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find? Um, what did you find shifted in your mind? I mean, you got real positive about the podcasting and it pulled you out of the depression. Did it, did you also find a mind shift going through all that negative health stuff and how you look at things now? 
I think it really, you know, I, I got, I was really angry at first. Like, how could this happen to me? I'm, I'm too young for all this stuff. This is all crazy. Like what's going on. I, I was really, really angry and I never felt a lot of, like, I, I didn't understand a lot of it. I think we get frustrated. We don't understand what all of this stuff means. Um, and it's just, it's, it can just overwhelm you. But as soon as I found podcasting, I like, it flicked a switch in my brain and my, and my brain just decided, you know, enough. And I'm, I'm not going out like this. This is not for me. I am no longer going to just sit by and let things go and let this be the end of my life as I saw it. And so, and podcasting, it gave me, it gave me success. It gave me, and it wasn't success. Like I had launched a podcast and done all these things already. I hadn't really done anything, but I could sit behind a mic and I could talk about things that were important to me. And I could interview really cool people that were just, I mean, just friends, but getting these deep conversations and doing different things. And it was like, I was winning at something. I was mm. accomplishing something. Um, and that was moving me forward, right? So just these little tiny wins, these little, hey, I figured out how to edit today, or I figured out how to like connect and have a guest on today, or I just put out my first episode and my sound was horrible. I had, oh, I had so many issues when I first started. I left those episodes up for a really long time even though my sound was terrible and it was because of the hosting company I was using, it was not Riverside. It was uh, it was a completely different platform that I will not talk about, but they were ducking, um, they were ducking my audio. So when I would download it, it was actually a very overly compressed. And so the sound was horrible um, and impossible, pretty much impossible to fix, even with a very excellent editor that was doing helping me with things so i sh i shifted and immediately i got better so i just surrounded myself with the right people at the right time for me that were supportive and wanting to see me succeed and as i got those little tiny steps of success it pushed me forward to want more and to not let my circumstances decide what my future was going to hold. I always would say I, I, I um, excelled in, in spite of my circumstances, right? Not letting all of the crap around me, the tornado, the monsoon, the whirlwind of medical issues really decide how, if it was my end of days, how I was going out, I was going to go out with a bang and, and do spectacular things. And that really shifted everything. And I think when we shift our, our thought patterns and how we want to live our lives, even though things can be catastrophic, things shift physically, right? Oh, yeah. Things shift. We can shift things with positive thinking, laughter, all of those things. I found a way in podcasting to get those things. And that's why it saved me. It truly, truly saved me. I actually went back to the doctor uh, eight months after I'd been released from the hospital for um, uh, an echo and a CT scan, and my heart had improved and was getting stronger. It still okay. needed to be repaired. I still had things going on, but it was getting stronger, and I that was because I was doing something that I loved to do, and I had so much joy around doing it, so... Yeah, it made a difference. That's a really inspiring story. Um, you had mentioned the bad audio. What do you tell new podcasters when they're getting frustrated with tech? Like, there, there's tech a million microphones, a million cameras. What the heck does somebody use? Yeah, tech is hard. You know, there's a lot of people will find a lot of reasons why they shouldn't, like, they're not ready to start a podcast or they're not ready to, like, hit record and put something out. There's, they're starting a podcast, but they just haven't, like, pulled the trigger on it. Really, they're not really doing it yet. They're just talking about it. And tech can be a big part of it. I hated editing. I, I still hate editing. To this day, I do not like to edit. My podcasts, they're mostly live podcasts. So what happens? What happens? <laughs> It's just out there, right? I love to go live. It is what it is. 
I look at all of the mistakes and all of the the tech issues as great TV kind of a thing, right? So I was doing a live podcast. I was out on the lake and I wanted to kind of like give an update and like connect with my fans and, and have this really fun experience. And then a storm rolled in. So I was literally on an, a boat <laughs> under an umbrella with rain all around me, trying to hold everything at the same time and have this live podcast. And it was like super popular. People loved it. Right. Oh, or it was like a snowstorm one day and I like was holding something and I dropped it and I was, it, but it was funny and I just rolled with it. And like, it's just real, just be real with people, make mistakes, screw up. I get people's names wrong all the time. I get stuff. I screw up all the time and it doesn't matter. I just keep going. Right. It's just, it's not how many times we fall down. It's how many times we get up and keep doing. Mm -hmm. And I got up when I, you know, was in the worst of my life. So everything else is easy for me now. And I just, and then I just start doing it a lot, like do a lot of podcasting. I was live every single day for a year, five days a week. That's so a that's, that's a lot. Did it not now, apparently not. No, that was a lot back then. And I was doing other podcasts as well. So I had a lot going on. And so it just was, a, it was just in the doing that I got better. It was in the doing that I realized the mistakes don't matter. So don't let the mistakes and don't let the perfectionism really hold you back from podcasting because it's, it's not, nobody, nobody cares. And the, and the thing about when you start a podcast, you probably only have five listeners, right? When you first launch a podcast, which is probably a good thing because you're starting yeah. starting out, right? And they're your family and your friends and they're going to be nice to you and they're not going to be like tearing you all apart about it. And it's just better to get doing them and, and just keep doing them and you will get better. I leave a lot of my old stuff on all of the different listening platforms because I want people to see the progression. I want people to see Hey, I started and I wasn't that great, but I got better and I just kept at it. And that's, that's, that's the secret to podcasting. Um, tech things. I mean, you can get a good microphone. I like a Samsung Q2U. It's like $70 US it for, a, you know, on Amazon, it's going to be one of the best mics you're going to buy for that amount of money. You could sure you can get $35 ones, but the sound's going to be crap. $70, not a big expense to someone. And then any headphones honestly will work. I have sure headphones, but you could get Dollar Tree headphones. I mean, you really could buy a dollar headphone and it'll work as long as you can hear yourself in them, right? Um, and then if editing isn't your thing, try going live. And if not, I mean, Audacity isn't that hard to use. Descript is great. I'm not, not plugging anything. I have any. I have no connection to them, um, but they are pretty simple to use. And there's a ton of videos on how to do it out there. So it shouldn't, it, it don't let that hold you back. Well, I love the idea of going live right away. And I hope everybody in the audience takes that to heart. It's helpful. We started this years ago. We thought about doing that. And then we ended up just like, life was too complicated technically, technically for us to figure out at that time. So we just don't record it, but we never edited anything. So it was we kind of halfway went live. And I highly recommend what Bree's telling you folks. It just, it frees up your mind when you know it's live. It's just like, there's nothing you can do about it. Just go with it. And all that other pressure's off. Oh yeah. It's, it's electrifying too. Your guests know when it's live that they're live mm -hmm. and it, it pumps up the adrenaline. It, they're better. And you're better because you are in tune, you're present, you're there, you're doing the thing and you know, there's a live audience out there. So you, you actually, it, it pushes you to be better. And I love it for me. It's invigorating. I love to be live. I don't care. I, if I screw up, I screw up. I just want to be live. I want to connect with an audience and that's the ultimate for me. So I would choose live over recorded any day, always. I think Moss got a question. He's got that look. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, pref I prefer to record it, I must say. But I do like, 
I like editing a little bit. I like the first 30 minutes, and then it sucks. So it's not fun anymore. Yep. Uh, we got to be a little bit creative with the intro stuff like that. That I can appreciate, but the worst part is, yeah. is doing doing my transcript sucks. Riverside don't understand a word I say because I have a bit of a Danish accent. I say some funny things from time to time. Yeah, that's but true. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and, and not only because of Riverside, not only that. <laughs> but w- besides just starting. What would you say is is some good ways for people that don't quite feel comfortable like creating a podcast yet to push themselves halfway there so they can take then the next half step afterwards? Sure. Well, the biggest question I always ask people is, why do you want a podcast? What is it for? Are you doing it for your business? Are you doing it because you have a passion about something? For me, I I love podcasting because I love sharing stories. I love sharing messages and having you come out on the other side with a new, either a new understanding for someone else and what they go through, or maybe learning some things about yourself that'll help you be a better human, right? And that's, that was my passion. That was what I wanted to do. And it's turned into having that around the world. I want the, I want everyone around the world to share their passions, their desires, their goals, what their life is like, wherever they are, because if we get to know each other, we make this world a better place, right? There's greater understanding, kindness, and love that can pour out if we share our, our message and, and get to know each other and each other's cultures and how we differ, but how much we are the same, right? So yeah, that's kind of like what propels me to do things. But what is your passion? What is the thing that you could talk about if someone said, hey, you have to go up on stage in five minutes and you have to talk for 15 minutes about something. What is that one thing that you want to share with the world? What is that thing that drives you that you are passionate about that you don't need notes on? That is what you podcast about. That's where you start, right? And find what that is. Because when you start a podcast, you're not, you're, most people say, I want a podcast because of what I love and what I want to share with the world. It's not, I want to have a million downloads and I want to make tons of money. I mean, some people will say that, but not very many. For the most part, it's because we have something we want to share. So what? It, find that thing that you want to share. What is that thing you could talk about easily and then start practicing it? Practice talking. You don't have to have the microphone yet and the headphones and all of the other things, but think about what is it that I want to talk about and then find what what could I speak about for about 10 minutes by myself, and I'm just going to record, whether it's on Zoom, it's in your phone, whatever you have, and just talk for 10 minutes. And then see what it is you're talking about. Listen back. Listen to it afterwards and see what was my point? What did I try to talk about? Was I clear? Did that come across? How did I present myself? And how do I need to tool this into a podcast, right? So you are the resource of what it is that you want to do. If you have a hobby that you're passionate about, if you, you know, belong to a group that, you know, you're super involved with, maybe it's here in the States, we have 4-H clubs that are super into like, you know, future farmers of America or doing things for, you know, the environment or whatever, whatever group it is. Maybe you want to start a podcast about that. Maybe you want to share more ways that people could learn about doing those things themselves, right? Maybe that's something you want to share. Maybe it's your business. Maybe you have something in your business that you think you're out there helping people, you might only be able to handle 10 clients at a time. That's what I ran into when I was first working with people I could only handle so many clients at a time because there's only so many hours in a day and there's only one of me. So how can I get that out to more people? I can do a podcast and I can talk about those things. And that way, many people could get that message. Many people can hear what it is you're doing in your business and they get to know you and they're learning from you. And then when they're ready to take the leap to be a client or buy your course or whatever it might be, they already are finding success from you. They're already, they've already gotten to know you. 
because it's a very intimate thing when you have a podcast. People get to see who you are. It's hard to pretend to be somebody different when you're li not just live, but recording a podcast, right? So you get to see who the person is and you get to see if that's somebody you want to work with. So for a business, it's crucial because otherwise you're just a web page. Nobody really knows mm. you. There'd be 300 web pages. You know, you go to Google results and you're going to get 25 on the first screen. How do you pick one? Well, the ratings are great here, but if I'm going to work with you, I got to, I got to like you, right? I want to like, I want to like you and get along with you so I can learn about you from a podcast. So I'm going to learn more about your business that way. And I'm going to probably want to work with you more because I've spent time listening to you already. So for businesses, it's amazing. It's such, and it's such a great way to advertise without hardly spending any money at all. Plus you can use it in so many ways. Um, but if you really want to share a message, a podcast is the way to do it. There aren't any rules. You're in charge. You pick the length, you pick the times, you pick the when, the where, the how. You get to make all of those decisions to fit your schedule and what you want to do. And so maybe you only want to talk for 10 minutes or five minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. There's three hour podcasts, though. I don't know if I could hang with those. I've done long ones and they're hard, but you can really make it your own. So that's the freedom of podcasting that I think it, it appeals to people and allows you to really do a podcast any way you want. So it's really up to you. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Thank you. And also that you pointed out just listening back to the recording. I actually think that's where content can help you the most on a personal level because you will learn how to commun communicate because you will listen to all the things that annoy you about your own voice and is irritating and you should have said it this way. You should have used this word instead. And then you start becoming aware of it so you can slowly start implementing it into your own conversations. And that for itself should be, be reason enough for anybody to, to go out there and start a podcast. I would 100%. I, I had little things on my screen right below my camera because I said absolutely all the time. Every response was abs absolutely. <laughs> oh, now it's those. nails on a chalkboard. So I, have, I had all these little notes of different words to use. Mm -hmm. To kind of... That's pretty like, smart. Don't... <laughs> Simple. You just stick them on there, you know, a little post-it note, stick it up there. Give me four or five other words to choose from so that I don't use that word all the time. Now I hardly ever use it. I very much so. went through the process that you just mentioned a few moments ago about what was my point. And I realized my first recordings, which I didn't post anywhere, they were practice recordings. Almost all of them, I never stated my point or my purpose up front. And that's a horrible thing to do to your listeners. So I'm glad you mentioned it because I want everybody hearing this to really, really embrace that idea that make it clear what it is you're going to cover. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I did that on purpose. Uh... <laughs> I figured that. You know, so we, we always like to ask at least one or two random questions. And you don't have to answer, but we ask him anyway. Um, sure. Who's who's like the most spastic, goofiest, out of control guest you've had? Because we want to know the bar that we have to hit to beat that. <laughs> uh, I I will tell you, it was a friend of mine. Um, I had her on. It was I was three months into my podcast, and I'll call her Victoria. That's not her name, but. Um, Victoria came on my podcast and we were doing Christmas traditions, right? I said, cause she's not a podcaster. She's not a pro. She's just a friend, but she was so, she really wanted to be on the podcast. And I said, we'll talk about what Christmas traditions we have. Oh my goodness. She was everywhere, all over the place. <laughs> I didn't know how to transition. I hadn't learned everything about podcasting at all yet. And just like, I w I felt like I needed a lasso to like, try to like catch her and like pull her in. Uh, it was, it was pretty crazy. And then she kept 
wanting to play Christmas. She kept saying, let's put some Christmas music on. And I'm like, we don't have copyrights to those. We can't do that. She's That's like, I wanted people. to play some. I'm like, and this was all live. And oh my word, it was, it was, uh, it was an interesting, it was, an, but it was actually a really successful episode. So you never know what's going to work. You never um, know. But she was, she was out there. That's for sure. She still is a lovely woman and we're still friends. Um, but yeah, she was, it was, that was the most, one of my most challenging episodes for sure. Uh, I, th I oh, think Moss and I could beat that. So yeah. Challenge oh, geez, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I think people should go and listen to it because it, to me, it sounded like it would be fun to listen back to just because of the cares. Not fun to be in, but fun to listen to. Uh, second random question. Uh, why is Master Chief in the background? I've been looking for him for nearly 30 minutes oh, now. Oh, and they can't see him right, right now with, our, with the way the screen is. But yes, Master Chief is in the background. Master Chief is uh, from my son. And uh, he was like, I don't want this in my room anymore. What am I going to do with it? And I go, hey, let me put it in my background. Because I like interesting things. So you don't have to look at this all the time. There's actually better things to look at behind me and around me. So I've got... I'm always changing things up, moving things around a bit, but Master Chief has found a home. Uh, he's, I'll call him my producer. That's what, that's who he is. There you go. <laughs> if, if I get Don't out of line, with the you know. production, then. That's right. <laughs> well, we normally have a podcast with us, but he's asleep right now. <laughs> he had a podcast uh, that hasn't joined us today. Uh, meow, 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 you, you all of a sudden hear it. Uh, normally about the, actually the 30 minute mark, the cat comes in. I don't know if it's because it wants Mike to feed him. That's 30 well, minutes. We don't, we don't dogs, really... And you just we woke up my dog. There you go. Let's see? Oh, on you. We got a pet dog instead. That's a new one. We haven't had... had uh, we had one. We ha we've had one. One pet dog. But this is the... Yeah. Well, my son just came home, so they barked at the door. But yeah, they, they said cat. It was funny because I was doing a podcast yesterday with a lady in New Zealand um, who is a co-author on my book with me. And her dogs heard my dogs barking. Oh, no. And so we, they, we, had, we weren't live yet, but all of our dogs were barking. I'm like, I don't know how this podcast is going to go. But yep, it all worked of out. Course. Everyone settled. <laughs> and that, oh, that wouldn't be fun. That could actually be a problem sometimes. My neighbor dogs, the bat crazy, can actually hear them. I guess yep. that could actually trigger a dog. But when it comes to where people should reach out to, besides, of course, we have the book, we have the course, where somewhere else people could reach you if they, if they want to get to really know Bree and see how you guys can you can connect and help each other really for sure i would love to connect to people they can go to beyondreach.live i am over there that is my website um my beyond reach institute which is the acronym brie <laughs> i did plan that and um absolutely I, I you know it's it's the place where i help people podcast people could just schedule meetings with me um i'll help you know, go over ideas. If they want to join my membership, it's super, 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 did I say super cheap to be a part of? Um, it's $30 USD a month. It's so inexpensive. And that gets you access to all my classes, which I do live and my, you know, happy hours and our workshops. And it also gets you two strategy sessions with me a month to get you started podcasting and help answer your questions. And my goal is to work with as many people as possible as an affordable way, because, you know, money is tight and I didn't have the resources to hire a ton of people and do all the things and learn everything about podcasting. And I would have liked one of me back in the day when I first started. So I try to be that to other people now and um, yeah, start a podcast. You would be surprised you probably have more in you than you ever thought possible. And you always have a message to share. I did a podcast when I was, when I was in my course um, and we were all asked to write or do a, a three to five minute recording on the same subject. And the goal was to show that we each have a different way of presenting the same thing. And the, the assignment was, what is your favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe? Mm. Simple, right? 
but why is it your favorite and what is it about it and how is it the best? And so we all talked about it in our own way. And I came at it with, I have the best recipe, but it's a secret. And I did the whole podcast. Uh, I did about five minutes and I was tell little bits of it, but I didn't, I waited until the end to reveal what the secret was to my chocolate chip cookie recipe. And it was fun. I had a good time with it. I just tried to do something that I enjoyed to, that I would have fun listening to, but everyone's was different. And it was just, everyone has a message just to share. And even if there are 20, 30, a hundred, a thousand other people doing, saying a message that's similar to yours, it's not the same. And your message is valuable and should be heard. And you, only you can deliver it in a way that's genuine and unique to who you are. And it needs to reach people. And so that's why I encourage people to podcast. Uh, we can all share our recipes uh, for chocolate chip cookies in a different way. So, And there's many different chocolate chip cookies. And people that's have true. People have preferences. There's been so many times where there's something I've heard been said multiple times for over like a three to five year period. But all of a sudden, when it happened on that fifth year in this specific post, it clicked. Not exactly. That was new information. It was just provided yeah, in a way. He's so talking I about our the... business meetings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to, do I have to switch spaces and get in between you guys and be like, no, stop? Well, there's actually four of us in the company. So, you know, you don't want all four of us on the podcast at the same time. There you go. But yeah, one, of, one, of, us is the, uh, one of us is our, our group adult. Yes, we have one of those. You have not one us. in charge. Oh, it's that's good us. to know. Oh, well, obviously. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got the two children, the two biggest children on the entire company. <laughs> well, thank you it. very much for taking the time to come on, Brie. It's been yes. an absolute blast speaking to you, hearing your story. I think it's very inspirational. And thank I definitely you. I think there's a few people out there that will be motivated to start podcasting. And if not, I don't know why. And if you to just as a reminder, of course, Bree's course is down below. So if you actually want to start podcasting, take the action today, sign up and start interpreting the information that Bree have given you because actions speak louder than words. Yeah, get started, folks. And I'm pretty sure that you could get Bree as your first or second guest because there she is right there. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Take the course. It's free. It's a free one hour course that gets you everything from A to Z, starting a podcast, how to pick a topic, how to name it, how to create art for it, edit it, produce it, put it out there, everything. Uh, there's a lot of information and it's free because I want as many people podcasting as possible. 